Hi, I'm Anthony Spicer from Cryptocurrency Kids. Today we have a very special interview with a very special person. Connie Gallippi is the founder and, and executive director of BitGive, the first government recognized 501c3 Bitcoin nonprofit. BitGive applies the innovative technology of cryptocurrency to nonprofits and humanitarian work in the developing world. Connie is a well known industry spokesperson for the social impact of Bitcoin. She advocates for more diversity and equal opportunity in the digital currency community, and I hope that includes kids. You can find out more about BitGive at their website, bitgivefoundation.org. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Yes, I'm, I'm Anthony, the Cryptocurrency Kid. Our mission is to, again, help everyone understand cryptocurrency, especially kids, because it is changing the future. So. Tell us a little bit about BitGive. What motivated you to start doing what you do? Well, first, it's nice to meet you, and thanks for uh, asking to, to talk. Um, and I'm excited about what you're doing. Um, so what uh, what inspired me to, to start BitGive? I uh, learned about the technology very early on, like back in probably 2011. And um, once I learned more about what the possibilities were for essentially from, from my lens was exciting to reach people in very remote parts of the world um, instantly and directly with funding. And so once I realized that that was possible, I got very excited about what um, we could do with the technology for philanthropy. Yeah, so it's, it's really helpful work. So like, what are some of the products that you currently uh, have on GiveTrack that people are able to donate to? Oh, that's a great question. Um, we're actually very excited to um, be partnered with two different NGOs who are actively fundraising and probably a dozen more on GiveTrack that are already under implementation. And the ones that are actively fundraising are a South American Initiative, and they have uh, different pro programs me, in Venezuela. And so we have three different campaigns with them for supporting orphanages and hospitals and abandoned pets in Venezuela, given the a social and economic crisis that is going on there. It's a lot of ongoing needs. Um, and then the other nonprofit is Concrete Jungle Foundation, and they have projects around the world um, building and supporting at risk youth through skateboarding. So they build um, skateboarding facilities and they do education programs, and it's all about giving the kids. Um, and healthy outlet to um, for, for exercise, but also just for extracurricular activities and things to focus on outside of what else might be available to them. <laughs> so you mentioned like uh, how it was easy and fast. So why do charities want to accept the Bitcoin? Like why do you donate them the Bitcoin and not transfer it to cash first? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Well, it's it's really sort of an evolution right now of the technology. So what I find to be the most exciting about the technology is that you can not only use it for a donation, but the, the charities themselves can use the technology to transfer funds globally, and they can do it much faster and cheaper and more securely than using our traditional financial and banking institutions. But um, currently, that infrastructure and the ecosystem isn't really very prevalent on a global scale, especially in developing economies. So oftentimes they do have to convert the funds in order to use them to implement their projects and programs. Um, but we're um, the pioneer in the space around this particular use case for cryptocurrency. And so it's important for us to keep pushing the envelope on what the possibilities are and to not just focus on what um, the simple sort of what I call the gateway uh, fundraising aspects of it. So you think that... Uh and I think I agree with you here that Bitcoin is like the newer, better, cheaper, easier version of our t uh, today's money system. Yeah, yeah. And the one thing I forgot to mention actually is also the transparency aspects of the blockchain. So we're also trying to leverage that for accountability so that donors and the public are able to see what's happening with the funds that charities are receiving. And um, the, the idea is to rebuild trust and to hopefully get more funds flowing to organizations that are willing to be transparent and that are accountable for their programs. So that's another aspect of it. Yep, 
and that goes directly hand in hand with Bitcoin, promoting every everyone to know about Bitcoin and how it's much easier and faster. So yeah. I was browsing around on your website and I noticed that you could um, uh, donate Bitcoin directly, but you also have a link to something called Uphold uh, to donate a different crypto. Are, like, why, why is that? Are you seeing different trends in the cryptos? Well, it's a great question. So probably in the last two years, there's been a, an explosion of all kinds of other cryptocurrencies. And I can't speak to the legitimacy of most of them. But, <laughs> um, but what's, what's been happening is there's a lot of interest in investing in them and in trading them and all this kind of stuff. So what we've tried to do is be more open to different cryptocurrencies for donations. And Uphold allows us to do that. They're an exchange, and so what they do for us is a unique um, solution where they allow for donors to come with any sort of different cryptocurrency or even uh, fiat currencies, and they convert them into Bitcoin, and then they send Bitcoin to the charity wallet that we have integrated with GiveTrack. And the reason we do that is we want everything in one currency and we want it in Bitcoin so we can track it for the transparency piece on the blockchain. So everything's translated before it's sent anyways yes, to Bitcoin? Yes, exactly. So it's all converted. Well, that, that, that's a really cool program right there. So now, so now you don't just have to use Bitcoin, you can actually use anything, any crypto that you want. Yes, exactly. Yep. So how do you like what you're doing? Oh boy. Well, it's been quite a journey. It's been very challenging, very rewarding. Um, it's, um, as I'm sure you've experienced with your research and your projects, that it, well, it's, it opens you up to a global perspective, global economies. Um, we've worked with so many amazing NGOs and people all over the world, um, also within the industry. Um, for me, technology was not my background or education, so um, getting involved in the tech world has also been quite eye-opening. Um, <laughs> so it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience, and I think I would never have grown or learned nearly as much professionally or personally had I not started BitGive. So yeah. I can't say anything bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it it does sound like very positive work. So uh, you know how Bitcoin Bitcoin values fluctuate every single second. Does that affect like how much people donate? Or does it affect like how much the charities receive? So it does in both cases, yeah. So we we do see trends in donations that somewhat somewhat mirror the market. Um, it's not always exactly following the market. Like the, there are people who are always supportive regardless of where the price might be. But we definitely see more support when the price is up, less support when the price is down, kind of in general. Yeah. And then also for the charities, it's definitely since, since they're holding. The, the funds in Bitcoin in their wallet, the price is always going up and down. So it's interesting to see like their um, progress towards their target is always kind of shifting. And eventually when they do use it or convert it, it comes out at a certain amount, but you never quite know what that might be. <laughs> so, so yeah. do you have any future plans for gift track and everything else related? Lots of plans. Um, so we're right now, we have a version one for GiveTrack, and we're working on some improvements on the uh, design and user experience. So those should be out soon, maybe in January. Um, and then we're working on some other more significant features, like an improved wallet, an improved reporting structure for the NGOs. Um, but much longer term, we have really big visionary ideas. So. Once we're able to get more traction and uh, use on the site, we want to have a global dashboard of visualizing all the data in real time. So if you have lots of donors and lots of NGOs on this platform and everything's happening on the blockchain, if we can visualize that data in a really interesting way for people to see um, where money is coming from, where it's going to, what the impacts are, um, how to be more responsive to things like disaster relief and how to correct things where there's maybe too much effort in one area or not enough in others and those kinds of things. So that's a long-term vision, but we're headed in that direction. So. And so it's so positive. It not only helps promote uh, Bitcoin and, and uh, help 
uh, other cryptocurrencies by making them stronger because they can use those ideas, but it also helps the world by, by people donating to charities. Exactly, you totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might get it more than a lot of people in the crypto industry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, I had no other questions, but thank you for taking the time to talk to me. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye, Connie. Good to meet you.